Hi friends, I'm Maria Jose. I'm Chase. And this is Chever, our Sprinter van. We've been living in our van for the last year and a half, traveling all over the United States, getting stuck, getting unstuck, and spending a lot of really good quality time with friends that we've met along the way. But after living in the van for about almost two years, things have gone a little south. And you always see van tours when the van is freshly finished or freshly cleaned up. And well, mm -hmm. we live in this one and we figured that it would be beneficial to you all and to the YouTube community to see what a van that is lived in looks like after a year and a half of full-time travel on the road. Keep in mind, I do love cleaning, so the van always looks clean. People are gonna be like, oh my God, your van is so clean. But it's actually, these clean most of the time most of the time and if not <laughs> it's because it's my fault exactly i do the cleaning chase does the dirtier dirtier dirtying dirty and eating <laughs> So with that said, there are gonna be a couple of changes that are coming up in the near future. We're planning some renovations because we are also planning to sell this van. Yes, so if you're interested in the van or purchasing the van, send us a message to our Instagram at Tioaventura Van. Or to our email address, chase at tioaventura.com. Everything will be linked down in the description box yes. below, but serious inquiries only because Please. your time is equally as important as our time. And and no one likes to kick tires all day long, so. Are you ready to give them a tour of our use van? Are you guys ready to see a tour of it? Let's go. Our van is a 2006 Mercedes Sprinter van 2500. It's got the three liter V6 and over 200,000 miles on it. Those are well-maintained miles. We're the second owners of the vehicle and we religiously maintain oil and all of that. Some of the things that we have in the little mobile command center here are a 13 and a half inch Android based tablet navigation entertainment system here. We have MagSafe chargers for our phones and we always have a dual uh, forward and backward facing dash cam on while we are in the van, even when the van's not running, just as a, a bit of security when we're traveling or when we're stopped somewhere. We built a bulkhead here above the driver's area because this is typically wasted space. And then we uh, installed uh, map lights here in the top, as well as USB 3.0 and USB Type-C chargers, so we can charge all of our devices while we drive, camera batteries and things like that, because we do make money working from the road, so we've always got to have our gear charged and ready to go. One thing that I always wanted here in the van was a guitar, so I bought a little CF Martin backpacker and installed it here on the bottom side of our bulkhead shelf, which is truly the most perfect place that it could have ever been placed. So if you didn't know, we've got dogs. This is Jake. This little mean guy is Pablo. And Jake is squished up right now in actually one of his favorite places to be. Um, but it's never really this small unless the swivel seat's turned around. But this is Jake's place uh, to sit while we drive. And below it, we have all of the dog uh, toys and harnesses and leashes and things like that. We built a little storage area and a way that can kind of prop him up while we ride. Another thing we have, like I said, is the swivel seat. Below the swivel seat, we have our cheap Chinese diesel heater that we have never had issues with until recently when I think our fuel filter broke. So that's one of the things that we'll be repairing and replacing here soon. A Little bit of broom storage. I don't do too much sweeping. Marose takes care of all that for us, but that's pretty well got everything up here in the front covered. And welcome to my favorite part of the whole van, which is the kitchen area. I love cooking, Chase loves eating, and we knew the kitchen area was gonna take most of the space in the van. On this side of the van, we're going to have the sink area. So I tried to plan everything before we actually made it happen. That way we can do dishes here, someone could be cooking. There's no bumping around, which we live in a van. There's always gonna be bumping around, but not as bad. We went with a sink that we make under mount. 
We also have soap dispenser and fresh water we can drink, which four different filters, so it's good to go because we have to get water sometimes from kind of like suspicious places. So we make sure that there's still clean water. Storage is something that a lot of people wonder like, oh my God, where are you gonna be putting all your stuff now that you live in a van? We have plenty. We have all kitchen storage. We have cups, plates, Tupperware, anything you need for your kitchen. Underneath here, we have our fridge, which is a very good size. It looks tiny, but somehow I make it fit a lot of food. We can probably go without grocery shopping for three weeks, maybe. This is an isotherm Chris Elegance. 130. We also have water heater underneath the sink. It's an electrical water heater. It's super quick. We always can have hot water on the main. On the other side of the kitchen, we have our electric cooktop, which I love. It's really easy to use. I use it all the time. We also have more storage where we have utensils and you know stuff you need for cooking. We have four different drawers in here. We have a deeper drawer for all our pants and appliances that we need for the kitchen. And tons of counter space. So I can just be cooking here, chopping. Someone can be helping me, which I always accept that. But the best part of the whole kitchen area is this pantry right here. Talk about some space. I can fill up these with so much canned food and like, you know, snacks, important stuff. And another thing that before we build the van, I was like, we actually need these. It's not debatable. We need it. Was a place to have a, our trash can. I did not want to have the trash just running around or like in the middle of nowhere. So we built a cabinet on the side that just flips. You'll have your trash. You could be chopping, throw it in there. Good to go. Let's move to the bathroom. So in a van this small, one thing that surprises a ton of people is that we managed to fit both a toilet and a shower all in one space. And that was something that we planned from the very beginning. We use it a ton. Truthfully now, not as much as we used to because we got a little bit smarter about the way that we conserve our water. So we really just try to hit the gym and utilize the showers there. But in a pinch, if we're nowhere near a gym or we're going on like a week long trip without any type of amenities, we will get a whole heck of a lot of use out of this. We have 48 gallons of fresh water that supplies everything in the van including this shower. We really only use this upper shower head to kind of wash off and everything. We do kind of what they call like a military shower where it's water on, water off, water on, water off, and you know, washing down in between. It's fully tiled and a lot of people think that that added a ton of additional weight and well, it did add some weight, but not as much as you would actually think because we used a really lightweight uh, weedy board backer instead of concrete board or something like that, uh, traditionally speaking. Because it is a wet bath, we wanted to keep our toilet paper dry. So we have a little hidden compartment for our toilet paper. And then the best part about it all is no matter where we are, if we're driving down the road, we're miles away from civilization, we don't have to dig a hole to use the bathroom. We literally just come in here lift our seat and sit down. So we have a nature's head composting toilet. I'm not a hundred percent in love with it, but it's a really great unit for the practicality side of things. The fans aren't necessarily as strong as I think they should be when it comes to composting toilets. And it's really been the only pain point that we've had out of the whole unit. So better fan, amazing toilet, same fan, still a really good toilet and it is composting so it diverts urine from solids uh, we compost those solids uh, over the course of four weeks before we have to change it out and then we got rid of the jug that normally came with the toilet and we pipe everything down to a seven gallon pee jug below the van um, that's set on a ball valve that we can go to the appropriate facilities and hook up a hose and, and dump it from there the last thing about the wet bath, and it's something that we fell in love with from the moment that we got it, it's our shower door. Marose hates shower curtains, so this was the perfect alternative. 
This is a Nautilus by Stoet retractable self-cleaning shower door. As soon as it goes back, it squeegees all the water off of it, so you never have to worry about mold or any grime or gunk buildup. And then when you need some privacy, you've got it. Somehow this is one of the most asked questions about living in a van. People always worry about where do you use the bathroom and also where do you keep everything? We make sure to have tons of storage. So we have upper cabinets on this side of the van because, well, we have a Murphy bed, but you will see that later. And then we have drawers for clothing. So let me give you a little tour of what's in our drawers. The first drawer we share. So it's a little bit of a mess. Underwear, you know, that type of stuff that you don't need to see. Second drawer is Chase's clothes. We use packing cubes to keep everything in place and just make it easier to find stuff in the drawer. And the third drawer is my clothes and I try to keep it organized, but sometimes it get a little hard. On the upper cabinet above the countertop, we have some mixed stuff. We have our brand new toaster, which was a necessity. We, for the longest time, we were like, we don't need a toaster, but we were using too much electricity, just trying to toast bread in a pan. So we ended up getting this toaster. I absolutely love it. A lot of the products that we're mentioning today, it's gonna be a link in our Amazon store. So make sure to check the links down below if there's something that you're interested looking at. And then we also have all of our shower stuff, shampoos and deodorants and you know, that type of stuff. In the back two cabinets, we have one for Chase. You know, winter stuff take a lot of space. So that's why we're putting it all in here. And then the last one is all my stuff, which also takes way too much space. Something that we haven't shown before is that we also have storage underneath the sofa. So a lot of people are like, well, if you don't have a fixed bed, you don't have the garage space, which it's true. We could not put a bike underneath there, but we both don't use bikes. So these make perfect sense for us. We do have tons of storage here. And then in the last spot that we have more stuff is in the other section of the sofa where we keep most of our shoes. So from the very beginning of us converting vehicles to live and travel in, we always knew that we wanted to separate space. We wanted to separate living space from a sleeping space and a working space from like a recreational space. So we tried to translate that as best as possible in less than 100 square feet here in our van. So this is our L-shaped sofa lounge area, um, but it also doubles as our workspace. So like we alluded to earlier, we work and travel from the road. This YouTube channel that you're watching this video on, this is our primary source of income. And it wasn't always that way. I worked a remote job in Marose, did work travel or travel work with uh, a makeup company. So we knew that we, one, wanted something for entertainment, but two, also needed the flexibility of a monitor. So we installed a 32 inch Samsung frame TV and we use it to watch TV as well as uh, as a secondary monitor here in our van. So it's a dual purpose piece of electronics for us and uh, it serves both the work and entertainment functions for us. How do we have a TV and how do we have internet here in the van? Well, first off, we have unlimited data plans with ATT and Verizon, which we've never had to use our Verizon. It's only AT&T the entire time that we've been on the road. Um, and it's all powered by 600 watts of solar up top and just shy of 600 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you're really keen on that type of stuff, you know 600 watts of solar is not going to power 600 uh, amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. So we also have a battery isolator um, that connects to our, uh, to our house batteries while we drive to keep everything charged up and uh, working flawlessly. We also carry a generator just in case we ever have to use it. And we have had to use it a couple of times when the weather has been unfavorable when we're traveling and uh, just a couple hours charging gets us in tip top shape. 
So all of our electronics are stored in various spots of the van. Um, we, we try not to tell everyone where that is just because we don't want to get broken into and robbed. I bet you can imagine that as well. Um, but when it comes to our electronics for our solar system, those are all stored underneath our Murphy bed. So directly across from where I'm at right now, at the very bottom, we've got all of our charge controllers, our inverter, and our batteries because we do have 110 volt plugs, but we also have DC plugs as well. So we can charge without having to worry about inverting or anything like that. And then on our roof, we went with not just one extractor fan, but two uh, that have the ability to pull air in or push air out. And the way that we use our Max Air fans is we just open them both up and then we turn the front one on to extract air out, which then in turn brings a cool draft of air coming from the rear fan, which works out perfectly the way that we've positioned it because it is right over our heads while we sleep. Um, so we're always nice and comfortable if the weather is a little warmer. Um, and then if it's a little cooler, we can just close them all and turn on our diesel heater. And how do we get the back to bed mode is what I'm gonna show you right now. First, we remove our lagoon mount table. We put the pillows in the back. That way that gives us a little bit of extra cushion when the bed is down so our heads, you know, can go back farther than the bed. We have a locking mechanism so that way when we're driving the bed will not come down. We unlock it. And the way we design the Murphy bed, we're able to pull it down and the TV stays in place. We do not have to move it. It is attached to the base of the bed, so we have no problem so far in this almost two years on the road. And there you go. It's a modified full-size bed. Very comfortable for both of us. I'm 5'2", you are 5'11", in a good day. <laughs> and we both fit very comfortable. Let me show you. <laughs> Another thing that we have behind the Murphy bed is that we didn't want to waste any space at all. So we decided to do some storage in the back. In this area, we put all of our pillows and comforter. We have a little section where we keep books and stuff that we use probably only when we're in bed. We install light switch as well that we can turn off the lights without standing up. And we also install some charging stations so we're able to charge our devices and our phone while we're sleeping. Another thing that I didn't get to think about in my other conversion was dirty clothes. And I knew I wanted a section where I could put my dirty clothes and don't think about it. And that's what this is right here. We have a hamper and that's where we store all our dirty clothes. We're able to just take it out, do laundry the day that we're doing laundry. It do not smell. A lot of people ask, how could you just sleep next to your dirty clothes? We cannot smell anything unless, you know, I don't know, you had a very bad accident in your clothes, but <laughs> we haven't had that. So there's no smell at all. And then we have a little hook where we can put some of our hats away. Welcome to the back of the van. Besides showering inside, Marose likes to shower outside. I don't because any little bit of wind makes me cold and I hate being cold. But Marose, she really likes to shower outside. She also wanted a way that we could wash our feet off if we're at the beach to get sand off of us and stuff or dirt and all that good stuff. And a secondary option for giving Jake a bath. With Pablo, he's small enough I can just throw him on the inside of the shower with me and we just shower each other at the same time. Jake, he's a little too big for that so it's nice to have access out here. We store our outdoor shower hose back here and then we can just connect it when the time is right and we've got pressure back here hot and cold water piped from the same 40 plus gallons of water our fresh water fill is right here we do not have a city water hookup it's something that we really didn't think we were ever gonna need and truthfully, we've never needed to use it. So gravity fill has been the primary way that we filled our tanks up every single time that we've needed to fill them up. And then the other really cool thing back here is this little table. 
I used to use it to work outside, um, kind of as a standing desk, but more than that, we've used it to kind of hold drinks and snacks while we're outside here with the dogs. It is on a locking mechanism, so when we're done with it, we just lock it back down. When we're filling up our water tank, we've got a little sight hole. That way we can kind of see where uh, our water level is. Um, it's also handy if we think we might be getting low of water to kind of check where we're at as well. So it's a really nice non-electronic way to keep an eye on your water level. Other things you might notice back here, we have some fake plants. Neither Maria Jose nor myself have exceptionally good green thumbs. So fake plants are the easiest things that I found to keep alive while we're traveling in many different environments. And so far that has stayed true. When we were building the van, this was just uh, a windowless cargo van. We only had the windows up in the front. Rose and I installed two windows here in the back that look just as good as if they came from the factory. And then we installed a T-vent window on our sliding door as well. That way we can create a little bit more of a breeze in the event that we need some fresh air coming into the van and the fans just aren't cutting it. So one thing when it comes to adding windows to your van, you lose a little bit of privacy and you also lose a lot of insulation. You create a very good way to uh, let in the hot as well as let in the cold. So our awesome friend Scott from The Wonderful Co has Sprinter Van specific window covers that are total blackout. They're magnetic, so they're super to install and they are insulated so they keep the hot out or they keep the cold out. Um, whatever you need to stay comfortable, these things help you out. So I just wanted to show you just a little bit of love and a tip from us to you all in the event that you're planning a van life adventure or looking for something really awesome for your camper van. These are the single best things that we have for our van and the link for them will be down in our description below. It'll be very specific called out here. So just check how we get these things put up. just like that and we are totally blacked out. I think it looks pretty good for, you know, traveled almost two years full time. Yes, there's some stuff that we wanna fix on it before we fully list, list it for sale. So make sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all the updates we're gonna be doing to the van. You also probably could see one of our projects in the very back. So van life and van conversions are not entirely over for us. It's actually the next big step in our journey here on this channel and in life. We are starting to convert vans full time mm -hmm. uh, and buses full time. So more on yeah. that in the near future. And if you're into shops and barn doors and all sorts of cool alternative dwelling spaces, we'll have those on this channel as well. So make sure to stick around. We hope you enjoyed today's video like it subscribe comment. all that stuff we love hearing from you it means a lot when you're here and it breaks our heart when you're not so if there's something that we forgot to mention in today's video make sure to leave a comment down below let us know we're here to help you out and inform you and take you along with us in this crazy journey until then we'll see you next sunday bye amigos.